Hi everybody, um, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use a program on the web called PedCatch, which is short for Pedestrian Catch. Basically it's a tool that allows, say, city planners or urban designers to essentially simulate the area that is walkable within any given time frame within um, a metropolitan or metrop uh, urban metropolis. Um, the website, I'll, which I'll put in the link below, it is headcatch.com and it's developed by um, Dr. Marcus White of Swinburne University and it's a really really useful tool whereby if let's just say um, you know let's just say uh, I, I'm investigating an area in Sunshine North in Victoria um, and and let's just say I uh, you know I, I want to I want to say, I want to see how far someone is capable of walking within um, within a certain time frame. If I was, if say I lived at this house, um, I want to see how far I can walk within 10 minutes. So this yellow icon here represents the starting person, um, which you can click and hold and, and move around. And if let's just say you live at this house, and you wanted to see what the walkability catchment is like, you drop that person here, um, and then you'd, you'd consider this command, uh, this I guess this command table up here, whereby you know you you set the speed, the limit in which the speed in which you want this figure to move. Now usually the the average person walks at 1.3 meters per second, um, hence that's the reason why that speed is set at default. Um, you know, we uh, the the maximum time in which the pedestrians may move. You may wish to set, you know, a twenty minute walk, a twenty minute walk, or a fifteen minute walk. But usually, I uh, you know, normally people will only tolerate of up to about ten minutes um, of walk. Um, the gradient shows basically how st is ba is basically the steepness of each one of these footpaths, which have been automatically generated. You can set your person. Um, you know, to, you can set the counter, the little counter here to be able to, you know, either avoid certain steepnesses or walk past, uh, you know, uh, um, avoid certain footpaths that are above a certain gradient, um, just to, you know, try and make it as realistic as possible. Um, look, for, in, in this particular tutorial, I'm just going to uncheck this because I just want to show, you know, what this tool is is, is capable of. Um, the isochrone type is just simply the, the graphical way in which, um, the graphical manner in which the this pedestrian's journey is mapped out. I'm going to use an offset buffer at 25 meters just to make it a bit more visually um, uh, pleasing on the eye. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And once I've set these basic, um, these basic, these basic parameters ready, I'm just going to click start and test the scenario. So it'll test a few moments, and then what you can see here is that it'll begin to send its little um, minions out um, along the footpath. And what PedCatch will do is it'll generate the theor it'll firstly generate the theoretical circle that a lot of city planners use, um, which is approximately um, 800 meters from the beginning of the individual. But then it will also generate the actual walkable distance within a 10 minute um, distance. So you can see that even though theoretically um, you can cover this area in a conventional um, in a conventional uh, um, 10 minute circle, in reality um, people can actually only walk um, based on what we can see in this isochrone here. So in other words, the area that is um, contained within this circle actually isn't theoretically walkable. Um, so that's basically why those two are mapped there, just to show um, users the difference in in um, in, uh, in in um, in area covered. So that's one particular feature of of, of PedCatch. But another area that is quite useful, especially for um, planners and urban designers, is you can actually download this simulation. You can actually um, um, import this scenario into, say, a GIS software, and you can draw in new footpaths and re-simulate the test. So, if let's just say you know you 
you're a you're an urban designer that says I want to you know um, put some new streets in along this area here put a new street along here and put a new street along there and rerun the actual uh, the actual simulation you can actually do that and how you would actually do that is at the top here you can download the geo JSON ways file which can then be um, imported into a GIS software so actually I'm just got I'm gonna do that now and I'm just gonna save it on my desktop head catch um, exist and I'm just gonna label it existing walkability and I'm just gonna save that um, for the purpose of this tutorial I'm going to I'm using QGIS which is a free downloadable um, GIS software um, um, which I can leave a link for um, viewers below if you wanted to download that. So this is QGIS, um, and basically inside QGIS, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layer and add layer and add a vector layer. So I'm, um, the vector layer that I'm going to add is the um, um, is the um, um, is the is the is the pet catch that I downloaded just before, which is just this one here on my desktop. So I'm going to click that and go open, and then I'm going to go add, and I'm going to close that. So you can see that now in the background, the street network has now been added in, and so the area that I'm going to focus my attention on is probably around um, the southern part around here. Um, I might. Uh, which in G in GIS is actually this this area here. So in particular, there's a number of things that I want to do, which is I want to create some new streets in this city grid here. So how I would actually do that is I go into the little pencil button above here in QGIS, which is the which activates the editing function, and I'm going to click edit. Um, then I'm going to go to the vertex tool. And then I'm going to just uh, um, hover over some of these streets. And when I hover over some of these streets, a little plus sign um, emerges. And that will allow me um, to, I guess, stitch this, um, the streets together um, in a fairly accurate manner. So if I hover over this and I click the little plus, you can see how now that there's a little um, dotted line with the, with, the lead, um, with the lead. And if I just hover over the new city block, um, it snaps onto the new city block. So you can see now that there's a new street there. And I'm just going to do that for a few other city streets as well. So I'll do that one. Um, I'm, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do this one. Uh, I might do this. I might do this one. Um, and uh, what else? And I might just do uh, say this one. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, oh, and I might say I might just zoom in a little bit by scrolling up, and I might just do this one as well. Um, so you can see that I've stitched in a few new streets, and now I'm ready to. Um, now that I've um, you know put some new streets in, I'm ready to retest the, the, the scenario. So how you would do this is, um, what, uh, firstly, click Save um, to save the edits that you've made, and, and click on the toggle editing um, button just to turn it off. Now, once you've done this, we've obviously made the edits on this particular layer, but let's um, and, and it's obviously called existing walkability. Now let's actually create a new layer so that we capture all of these new streets that we've created. So I'm just gonna right click on this layer and go export and save features add. This will just basically create a duplicate of, um, of, the, walk, of the new walkability map that I've just created. Um, and I'm gonna save it in a GeoJSON and I'm just going to save it on my desktop again. And this time I'm gonna call it just proposed walkability. Click save. Um, we'll keep that all the way it is. Um, there's nothing else that needs to be changed here and just click OK. So then we've successfully saved the layer. Then what you want to do is um, locate the file that locate the, the you know the new walkability that you saved 
So in my instance, I saved it on the desktop. Um, and then what you what you'll need to then just do is actually just um, drag and drop um, that new GeoJSON file that you created just a moment ago into your web browser. So you may recall that I saved this on the desktop file. So I'm just going to click and drag and drop this into Pedcatch on the internet browser and let it go. And then you can see it'll what it'll then do is it'll just refresh itself. And you can see the new streets that I drew in just before. These ones here and all these ones here are now actually being recognized by Pedcatch. So now I have the ability to be able to retest my walkability simulation just to see how, whether or not these new streets are actually effective or not. So then again, I'm just going to drop my um, guide in here. Um, you may recall, um, you know, 1.33 meters per second, um, keeping the offset buffer at the same, keeping it at 10 minutes, um, and deactivating the gradient just for, for this time. And then I'm just going to click start. Um, and you can, again, you can see that it now begins to set, send out its minions to, you know, fo essentially follow the, um, the the footpath. But you can s begin to see that, you know, these new footpaths that I've drawn in, they're actually being um, acknowledged by the people and they're actually walking past it as well. Um, sadly, the, the new footpath doesn't look like they've made a difference, but you can begin to see how, you know, if you wanted to create new city blocks or introduce new streets and you want and you're trying to put forward um, and you're trying to anal analyze how how much difference these streets make in terms of um, 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 walkability for pedestrians. This is a really really useful tool that will enable you to you know draw your own streets in, test the walkability, um, and do that analysis. Um, and that's it. Thanks everyone.